holding currently three different, uh, I'm running three great businesses, and most of the time I'm exhausted. So I'm always looking for um, help to make um, my uh, job as a mom as easy as possible and um, do the best that I can do. And one of the things is, after finding schools that were appropriate for my children, I knew that if their head was well filled, I needed their body to be well fed as well. So, the first thing is how to grow a healthy being. So this is my uh, one of my organic beans. And um, I was uh, going through what are the most important quotes I heard that helped me understand uh, what I wanted to explain to you today. And the first one had nothing to do, it's from Frederick Douglass, it had nothing to do with raising children, uh, with eating proper food, but I thought it fit right there. It's, it is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. And I think this is very uh, factual to what's happening uh, right now, because people are getting sick from eating terrible food. And um, I found another one which I found amazing is the father of medicine, Ibuken Kratos, I think that's how you say it in English, so I won't be butchering his name. But he said, let thy food be the medicine and medicine be thy food. And I thought, wow, something I'm inherently feeling. Two people have already, um, and with, I, I think, a uh, good uh, background, you know, Ibuken already have uh, put out there something that's very important. So I wanted to see how did it all start. Our first meal is breast, it, it, it's milk from breast. And this is filled with um, uh, antibody, this is filled with vitamin, and this is filled with um, everything that a child needs. Actually, the first meal is called um, colostrum, and it is so important to someone's life. Plus, it's, it creates an incredible bonding between mother and child. Um, all the food that the mother ingests is actually flavoring the, the milk that the baby is going to drink, and uh, therefore starting to develop its um, palate and uh, getting used to food in different flavors. Then what else? Well, then we had, uh, we made home cooked meal. I mean, home food is incredible. At first the mom would puree it and spoon, spoon feed it to you. And then um, little by little you started to eat food that was more solid. Uh, what does uh, home meal do as well is when Someone is cooking a meal that uh, was picked that day from fruit and vegetables. It tastes amazing. It's usually flavored with your culture, being your religion or the place in the world you come from. And this is how you pass on your food culture to your children. It smells incredible. What does it do? You know, smell it, your, your mouth stops watering, and it starts the most important uh, process, which is called digestion and people can forget about that. Then we savor it and enjoy it as a family. Uh, this is where you learn the unwritten rule about how to chew your food and how to eat properly. This is also a perfect time for parents to see how their children are doing. We had small farmer garden, uh, small garden. We had it in the front, in the back. The people who didn't have it, they had farmer market in the city to feed them. And this is very important to me because I read this years ago uh, when I was still a teenager and not thinking of having any children. I read that people, there was a study made that if children are raised with a garden around them, they're very balanced and they feel very secure because they have an understanding that if you plant something, it becomes food and you can feed yourself. And it's so funny because in this article they were talking about the fact that uh, the first astronauts were all farm boys. And I thought, oh, how interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is what is better for a mom if you're gonna put carrots on the table or tomatoes to go pick them in your front yard? Because you know they didn't sit on a shelf. 
you know exactly when they were um, harvested. And then it all changed. After World War II, we convinced people that it's not convenient to breastfeed. And it was very important for some people who couldn't breastfeed. Let's use formula. Well, I don't know if you see that baby's face, but <laughs> it's very different as the one that was attached to the breast. <laughs> And then we told parents, do not waste your time cooking. Have a chili de mar. It's filled with um, salt, um, uh, additives. Um, we, we put a little food coloring so it looks appetizing. And just throw it in the microwave and you don't have time to think. Well, this, when you get instant gratitude like this, you don't have time to process the food properly. Uh, it doesn't make your salivate as much. And then my big pet peeve. Let's have food, all kinds of food, all year long. Let's take vitamins and minerals away and flavor, and let's give you food that is durable. Um, forget Mother Nature and sense of season. Let's give it to you and fill it with GMO, pesticides, fertilizers, and additives. So we lost flavor, we lost vitamins, we lost mineral, but man, did we gain in chemicals. And my favorite one, I fructose corn syrup. <coughs> I try to read label and not finding it produce. It is taking me hours to go down the aisle to find things that doesn't contain it. And um, this one I had to have to find <coughs> is a cure. So our children are being sick and we're getting them addicted, addicted to sugar and sweets. And it's everywhere. It's in the crackers. It's in the drinks. It's everywhere. And there is some doctor out there that are screaming, please, please, you would, this should have a label the way cigarette boxes have a label. Because you know, it is so incredible that you're trying to get things inside your children's body and you're giving them things that are creating what they call lifestyle disease, metabolic syndrome. Uh, type 2 diabetes, cancer, obesity. Is it really, I mean, we wouldn't let our kids play with a loaded gun, and yet we're giving them food that, has, that are gonna get them sick. My next thing is, eat by food, it's convenient. Oh yeah, it's really convenient. Eating, I mean, I'm from a country where there is no allowed food in the car, right? This is not a concept we have. When I came here and I see people putting makeup on, eating their breakfast, I think it's convenient, but it's freaking dangerous. <laughs> when I went to buy my minivan, the man, one of the big sales, um, sales <coughs> from the man was, it has 12 cup holders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a vehicle to take my kid to a farm. I'm not going to a bar here. <laughs> <laughs> and then my big pet peeve is portion. In, we wanted value for our money. And I understand that. I'm a mom. I'd like to stretch my dollar. But instead of getting value for our money, we got a huge amount of food. It was the whole you can eat buffet. Have as much food as you can. The food was so terrible because it cost a lot of money to grow good food. They gave us food that filled our body, but not nourish it. And that is the big problem. We went from small, medium, and large to extra large to 3x. And not only the portion got big, we did as well. So my friend always said to me, yes, well, but Valerie, I can't afford, I don't have the time, I use fast food because it's cheap and it's really much faster for my family. And I loved it. I found the New York Times, I've done a um, side-by-side -side comparison about what it actually cost in 2011. And I'm not gonna name the fast food chain, but a fast food chain, uh, dinner for four was $28, rice and bean, 10, Chicken potato salad, 14, it is not cheaper. So I saw a movie with my children because they are my uh, teacher, and in the movie it said, see a need, feel a need. And I said, oh great, like I need another job. <laughs> so all my friends would look at what I put in my kids' lunchbox. Everybody keep calling me, how did you get your kids to eat seaweed? 
And I said, did, how do I get? It said, they have no choice. That's what's on the table. <laughs> That's what's for dinner. I mean, you are in charge of your kitchen. You're the one pushing the cart down the aisle, or you're the one going to the farmer market. But I realized that people had lost the sense of shopping, the sense of prepping, the sense of cooking. So if you start by teaching them how to cook, you're going to fail because they're going to buy the same bad produce that have no flavor. So I want to teach people how to shop. First of all, I am also part of the 1%. I buy everything at farmer market that I can. Then if I go to the store, I buy everything on the outside of the store. When you go down the aisle is when you get in trouble. This is where all the prepared food, this is where all the additives are, are at. Be careful, it's dangerous. Do not go down the aisle. <laughs> Prepping food. It's really to serve food to your family by just adding salt, pepper, uh, uh, a little bit of um, olive oil, and some lemon. You would be amazed. And then finally, when you have discovered great produce, when you know how to shop, you will want to cook. And I will have people there to teach you. So how do I start this? Well, you know, I'm the kind of mom who like to explain concepts to people. So the first concept I would like to start with people is the concept of whole food. So whole food, what does that mean? Is close to the source and minimally processed. You go to a tree, you grab an apple, you rinse it, you eat it, it has everything you need. You minimally process it when you make it, turn it into applesauce. A very few items have been removed. It's still the same thing. You have not added anything to it. Where it becomes fuzzy with me, and that's a big pet peeve I have with my friends, <coughs> well, my kid won't eat vegetables or fruit, but I give them fruit juices. The problem is mother nature is smarter than we are. We need to remember that, okay? We have babies the way we need to have babies. Breasts become engorged the minute we need to feed them, and the food grows the way it needs to grow. If mother nature made sugar so hard to access, it's because we shouldn't have too much of it, okay? And eating three apples is the sugar is covered with fiber, and drinking six apple uh, uh, juice, it has all the sugar and none of the benefit of the fiber is the wrong thing to do. Please give water to your children. <laughs> and then my biggest thing to do If you're going to have pulled your cereal, apple something, the first ingredient should be apple, okay? It should not be a flavoring. And I would love to, since in America we can change law, let's change this one. If you name something something, the first word in the ingredient should be the something you name. <laughs> so this is what I want people to start thinking about when they think about fast food. Minimally processed. Bake an egg, uh, no, boil an egg, I'm sorry. <laughs> boil an egg, uh, put uh, nut butter on a piece of vegetable, eat a fruit. That doesn't take any time. You don't need to drive anywhere, and you, can't, you can eat it at your table. You don't need to drive. <laughs> so, feel a need, you know, uh, see a need, feel a need. So, I'm a computer geek. So I'm a mom who's trying to feed their children well. So the perfect segment to this was, let's try to reach as much people as I can, because it became too uh, time consuming to send email to all my friends about what I was putting in my kids' lunchbox. I wanted to create a tool you could use. It's completely free. It's called snacksandlunch.com, because that's the easiest way I can think of how to get people there. Schools are not giving us food we can feed to our children because they're trying to offload off of us food nobody wants to buy and feed it to our children. So I created snacksandlunch.com and the only thing you have to do as a parent is go there, register, by giving me the name of your child, it's the age of your child and where you're located, it will tell you which Farmer markets are available. That's the first thing you will find. And where they are located, it will give you all the other stores that exist. And of course, bear with me. I'm building this alone. I don't have a penny. 
So it's taken me six years to put it together. <laughs> and um, it will ask you your child diet preference because there is lots of parents out there that are struggling, going down those aisles, trying to find food to feed their children and not get them more sick than they are. Some of the choice are based on your culture, some of those choices are based on religion, and some of those choices are based on real dietary needs. So would it be dairy-free, gluten-free, halal, kosher, sugar conscious, traditional or vegetarian. Vegan is coming soon once I have somebody who can really explain to me what vegan is. I just want to make sure that I'm doing it properly. <laughs> but you can also mix and match it because you might be of a Jewish religion and um, have a gluten intolerant child. So once you give this to the, to the computer, you are done. Here is what you get. A weekly menu that looks like the rainbow because it is important to eat the rainbow because every food has a different color, offer you different flavors. And this is what is very important to me. My kid doesn't like cucumber. Change it. Dairy. You need to give your children dairy. I have kids, I, I teach at school uh, nutrition as a hobby. Um, and um, kids tell me, oh no, you can't eat fat, it's bad for you. Fat is not bad. There is healthy fat out there. Your brain is made 70% out of fat. And if you don't give your body fat, it starves. And if it starves, you get fat because your brain keeps saying, keep eating. I haven't been fed. So children need to give healthy fat to their body. And we need to stop this nonsense. Legume and grains together are perfect protein. Veggies, what a concept. Baked food, a little bit of it. Fruit. And the two um, that are quite often missing is dry fruit and nuts. And dry fruit, I don't mean beef and raisins every day, okay? Like, there's a lot of dry fruit, please no sulfide. But all this will be explained to you in a very nice way in this website. <laughs> and then the last one, which is uh, optional, is animal protein. Because I put it as optional because I find it very difficult to keep it cold or warm when I put it in my kids' uh, lunchbox. So once you agree with what the software has given you and once you have made the change you need to, it will send you your grocery list. No more hours spending around the, um, with your grocery start, uh, cart around the shop looking for what to put. This would be by dairy group, this will be by grain group, and you just go down the aisle and pick and put what you need. Once you go home and put it in your cupboard and your fridge, you go to Monday, and here, we've made it as simple and as visual because I thought pictogram everybody understood. Right now, I can't afford to translate it in every language, so I'm trying to make it so that people who can or cannot read can help. And I made it so that your children can help you because this is what will teach your children about proportion. Don't hand them a bag of chips. They'll, they'll eat it. They're not going to read how much they should be getting. When you give them this, they find out that you should not need an entire bag of nuts. You should just need a few. That's all you need. And uh, then some of you said, but I have no idea what yellow lentils is. Well, double cut on it. The yellow lentils are this. This is all your, this is the recipes you can do. This is a photo montage how to cook it. And hopefully very soon we'll get a convinced um, chef to help us uh, come up with little video to help parents make food. So in the morning now, you don't need to be alone. You can have a very easy uh, daily and weekly help to make better choice for your children. So we can raise healthy human beings that have a full head and a full belly. And um, to, in France, I learned um, when I was in uh, university, uh, we were listen, learning about two different tribes, the Arapesh and the Monogomor. The Arapesh um, and the Monogomor were studied because they were so different. And it started from breastfeeding. One, one of the tribes, the baby had to cry for hours to get food. And the other one, the minute the baby was wanted to eat, he was fed. One of the tribes that didn't feed their baby properly they were aggressive, they were always fighting with each other. The other one, they were so pacific and so uh, inclusive, and it was a beautiful 
place to watch. And I want to put it out there. What place do you want to be part of? What kind of a country do you want to live in? We need to save our children. There are too many uh, diseases that they do not need to have. So let's learn from the past. Let's learn from the past what worked. Let's learn from the past where our mistake was, when we saw we could play Mother Nature's role. And let's look into the 21st century tools as this one to make our choices easier, but make it better.